Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Essays and Espresso podcast. Here with me, I have my two co-hosts, Boken. How are you? Very good. Well, I guess I'm kind of sick, so I might so, have well, to I'm cough so, a couple sorry times. To hear that, buddy. I'm sorry to hear that, buddy. Yeah. <clears throat> You're gonna start feeling worse after we start talking, but it's okay. I know. <laughs> and Acer. Yes. How are you? I'm here. My flu uh, is gone. My throat is getting better. You gave it to Boken. Oh, hopefully. All across the sea. Yes. Just like the Weezer song. Don't start with this fucking music shit. <laughs> like, already. I had to listen to you talk for 10 minutes about Final Fantasy fourteen before we started recording. And now you dump this music onto my lap. You do realize there's still way more Final Fantasy talk incoming, right? Oh, never. Oh, uh, yeah, I will, boy. I will kill myself. Hey, man. Hey, man. There's so Pinkerton. much Final Fantasy talk. Uh, holy Pinkerton shit. is uh, Weezer's second album, and it's oh, a yeah, classic. Yeah. Interesting. It's a classic. Across the Sea has some questionable lyrics, but is a really nice song regardless. Well, that's, that's very interesting. Yes, I yes. bet this anyway, is why people tune in. Why else would anyone tune in but to hear me blab on about Weezer? Because they love Yu-Gi-Oh, Daniel. This has oh, been a long true. time they coming. They do love Yu-Gi-Oh. You finally got your way, Acer. You finally, you, 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 you wrestled us to the ground, handcuffed us, and forced us to watch. I gave you a little lick on the neck. Made, I, gave you a little kisses. Made it really uncomfortable for everyone. And, we and then like Kakyoin, you got the chair and you're like... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, can't ev- I can't even see how people who like Yu-Gi-Oh like this. Okay, so here's the thing, Bogan. Wait, hold this on. Is, this Acer? is not representative of what Yu-Gi-Oh is actually. <laughs> I know. No, I know. See, I know Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> it's, it's not like I'm not familiar with it. Uh, what were you going to so say, Acer, Daniel? A- wait, Acer, Acer, we need to do this. We need okay. to do this. Why Yu-Gi-Oh! Season Zero? Why, why'd you make us watch this? What because, compelled you? Okay, so here's the thing. It, Yu-Gi-Oh! is really fucking long. And it was either we have to... I have to cherry-pick these specific episodes and from the original anime run, like the Konami run. Uh, that's 224 episodes. Either I create... A watch list of 20 episodes from that and construct for us a, like this crazy machete cut of that, that run. Or we could just watch season zero. And I don't think you can condense Yukio down into like just one season. I think there's way too much story packed into that. I would have rather watched 50 episodes of yu gi than this. We can still do that. No. Boo. Like yeah, I, I was actually I was actually thinking we might um next time I might just recommend we read the Yu-Gi-Oh DM manga. <laughs> uh, uh, no. <laughs> uh I feel like you you owe me something to be honest. <laughs> like I feel like this is make- this this, this is, is not in no exchange. This is in no way shape or form any better than handshakers like See, not at I've, all okay so he, here's the thing i feel i am still owed something from madoka magica no you're not i, I feel this no. i feel this does not begin to uh to uh, pay the debt that you owe me hold on no Dude, no what no. are you talking about madoka is a good show mm. uh, first of all our agreement was you get you get to make us you get to watch us Yu-Gi-Oh. No, wait. What am I saying? <laughs> Way too English, my man. <laughs> wow. Jesus. What is what is the sentence I'm trying to say? You get I don't know, dude. You get to yes, make, make us you guys watch watch. Yeah. Yu-Gi-Oh. Yeah, that's the sentence, right? You get to make us watch <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes. Look, I'm a foreigner, okay? It's fine. It's okay. It's okay. I'm sorry. I have lapses. I, it's okay. I'm sorry. You get to make uh, us watch Yu-Gi-Oh! And then yes. I mm. 
get to recommend some terrible anime. Yeah, you But I don't think, think I can... Recommend Darling in the Franks or something. If I recommend Darling in the Franks, you still owe me. <laughs> that show is miles better than this garbage. Like, not See, even joking. I don't joking. think so, because I think this show has has t nuance which you smooth-brained simpletons <laughs> may just not have understood. Oh, it's too deep for us, man. <laughs> we can't handle it. It's uh, way over our heads. No, okay, um, so I think I think we should just uh, just quickly talk we need about to our. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, f I, f I also think we should all explain exactly what our feelings about this are, but. What do you want to do first? Do you want to talk about the show or? I think maybe some, you probably know the background of this. Like this is very different from normal quote unquote Yu-Gi-Oh, right? Yeah. yeah. I'd like, I'd like to have a little bit of context for this. Okay. So for what the hell I watch. <laughs> so Yu-Gi-Oh began as a manga by Kasugi Takahashi. And the basic gimmick was it's like Dragon Ball, except instead of power levels and all of that, we just the protagonist is just good at games. And instead of these crazy combats and these, you know, like I said, power levels, instead of warping to different, like it's it's like your typical One Piece, your shonen ma battle manga, except rather than escalating how muscular and strong everyone is, we just play different kinds of games. And the original manga, I feel like was. Like, 80% hit, 20% miss, because some games are just bullshit. Um, but that's that's Yuki's superpower, is that he's endowed with this gambling spirit. And then, in, I think, the third chapter, or like the eighth chapter or something, he introduced Kaipa, and he made this dual monsters game. And all of a sudden, Yukio became super popular, and everyone began sending him messages like, hey, are you going to do another, like... Duel Monsters, another Yu-Gi-Oh card game one? We really liked that one. And Takahashi was like, no, I, I already did that. And he just kept writing about like gambling with scorpions and crap like that. Um, but then, assumably, uh, Bandai came to Takahashi and said, hey, do you want to make a whole lot of money? And uh, he was like, yeah, sure. And he reintroduced Kaipai, brought back Duel Monsters, and then he concluded his original Yu-Gi-Oh uh, manga with that battle, with that role-playing tournament that was in the final uh, few episodes there. That was the end of Yu-Gi-Oh. Then he created Yu-Gi-Oh DM, and that was all trading cards. Like, that's when you get to Pegasus and Merrick and all that stuff you know from Yu-Gi-Oh! The Abridged series. This is the story that happened before that. Like, and this is just... These characters, they, they go to school... And they have these adventures featuring gambling. I like that okay. you said gambling. Yes. Because okay. I I actually okay. work in the gambling. I mean, I don't know if it was your intent, but I work in the gambling industry. Okay. The, I, the, I don't think any of us knew that, Bokken. Really? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you worked in politics. Yeah. I work a political job in the gambling industry. Oh, interesting. Um, okay, but that is are why you I the know. Reason, are you the reason we keep getting those fucking Konami Silent Hill patchy slots? <laughs> <laughs> See, that's that the, the <laughs> definition of gambling is mm. that there is no skill involved and the player has no input on the outcome of the game. Like by definition, by law, that the games have to be designed this way. And okay, that's also I, I, why I, I think that's the trick in, they use in Japan, where these these slot games, these what are they called? Uh, ga slots. Gachas, Pachinko. Pachinko. Oh, gotcha. Pachinko. Pachinko. Gotcha that's games. right. Where they pretend this is a skill-based game, even though it's just a ball falling down, and you can't really influence it. But because they pretend like the player can influence it, that that's why I think it it, uh, it dodges a bunch of gambling regulations. I want to say, and mm -hmm. I'm not. I'm not an expert on that, but uh, yeah, that is a very important distinction. Okay, I've, um, this is gambling in the sense of playing poker. You can't influence poker. This is not slot machines or anything like that. To me, poker Although, is not I, a gambling game. Poker, poker I mean, is a I've, game of skill. 
Yeah, sure, but that this is like they are gambling. They are making wages and they are playing games through that. Um, right. It's ga- it, this is gambling in the sense that you're betting money or you're ju- betting yeah, it's, something. It's gaming. It, you know. Yeah. It, it's like, a, it's a money match. Sure. Sure. It's uh they're they're gaming. That's that's probably a better way to put it. I remember the manga translated it as gambling spirit. Um and like yeah, his his whole gimmick was he's really good at games. Yeah, but here's the thing: a lot of the games okay. are actually a lot of them gambling. Are bullshit. A, a, a lot of them all are of also them, bullshit. All of them except one, or maybe two, are complete bullshit. Uh, some <laughs> of them are just straight up gambling. Like remember that one episode where uh, the guy who has infinite luck is on a gaming show, and yes. the game is they both just press a button and then who gets the higher number wins okay, uh, see, yeah that was complete who bullshit. watches no, that see see okay th- that one was complete bullshit and that's not in the manga but in the end where they're playing that matching game that is actually yuki using skill because he keeps just selecting the same two cards knowing that the other guy will inevitably have really good odds of selecting the joker card and like th- that's the sort of um it's it's like a yeah, kit. but then there was also some like power outage that yeah, uh, them out. reset the cards or whatever. Yeah, like, I, look that that whole arc. I don't think that was in the manga. I remember Joey, and we're just gonna use the English names. Yeah, yeah. I remember Joey went to some uh, game show where he was trying to win a lot of money, uh, but it wasn't like this luck kid. He wasn't okay. Do you want me to tell you what's different about the anime from the manga? Sure. Okay. Kaiba only appears twice in the manga. That's his first duel with Yugi, and that's Death Tea, like the final segment in the amusement park. All of those people he's hiring to go after Yugi, that doesn't happen in the manga. None of those characters are canon, which Hold is on, why... There's, there's so, a third so time, the manga... <laughs> there's a third time with the witches where he bails Yugi yeah, yeah, out. Yeah, that, that's, that's not in the manga. Okay. Because, so like, in, the... <laughs> in that duel, remember, Kaipa summons the other blue eyes. That was supposed to be a really big reveal in the Death Tea arc that Kaipa has assembled the other Blue Eyes. But they so just sort of undermined that reveal by having him play there. And they did it, again, because the Yu-Gi-Oh card game was way more popular than Yu-Gi-Oh the manga. So just to be clear, in the manga, Kaiba's grandfather is not a zombie that plays video- <laughs> that, that plays card games. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't... I, sorry, no. Uh, that's... that's uh, no... That is honestly that so anime, funny. That, that was an uh, anime original. Yeah. Like and his love for oranges. <laughs> it's <laughs> like you you have your almost dead grandfather and you just wake him up to beat some school kid at gambling. Some school kid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's an anime original. Mwah. Just like Miho. What the fuck? Yeah. Okay. Was her deal? I hated every second of her on screen. I was like, get this trash character out of here. She's so pointless. She, it's, it's so weird because she she lives only in this show. Mm-hmm. Like, she's, she's just... She, she's not in the manga, like you said. She's not in Duel Monsters. No. She's just in this fucking weird anime adaptation. Like, what... What the fuck is her... De- Why does she exist? She's such a bad character. I mean, they're all bad characters, honestly. Uh, <laughs> well, but she is legitimately the worst. So, y- y- I feel Kaipa is a worse character in this because in the really? original manga... Yeah, because in the original manga, he has, like, an actual characterization. Here, it's just all over the place. Where, on well, one hand, he, he really he... respects Yuki. On the other, he's hiring all these weird eccentric characters to go after him it's it's really bad whereas in the original like he originally just appeared as like a gimmick character but when they brought him back they like they added a sort of like they they incorporated that sort of dark magical uh evil in the background of the universe like they he he's threaded into that narrative and then in dm he has like way more characterization because he becomes sort of a secondary protagonist like he, yeah, he becomes a better rival character. Here, he's just whenever they need, uh, whenever they need to justify one of their dumb departures from the manga, they just have Kaipa pay somebody to show up. 
or he saves Yugi from the three six sisters, which was really weird. Yeah. Well, I don't think it was that weird. I mean, he is like, I'm going to be the one to beat you, Yugi. And well, it was weird because he just so happened to notice that like the three sisters was around and then put two and two together. Yeah, that, well, like, yeah. Like, that, he, it's, that, it's, I was, that was so stupid. It's this, also weird. It's also no. weird in the sense that Kaipa doesn't want to want no one else to beat you. Like if the sisters had beaten Yugi, uh, Manka Kaipa would have said, oh, well, Yugi's trash. I need to beat the sisters. Like he, he doesn't care about... Yuki's cemented place as the only man who ever... Well, he does, but, like, I I don't think Kaipa would have shown up to save him. Like, that's really out of character for uh, the Kaipa I know from uh, the other anime and from the manga. I mean, it's true, it was only in that episode that Kaipa showed any friendly feelings towards yeah. Yugi. Like, even, even a modicum. Otherwise, he legit... Like, he, he literally fucking kidnaps... His, yeah. his grandpa <laughs> yeah. and and makes Yugi come to his to his amusement park and then like he broadcasts this death game to the world and no one even <laughs> bats an eyelash like what uh the we'll, we'll talk about death tea because they they really changed stuff around the original manga death tea is way more uh dubious <laughs> uh so I need to ask Boken, because like throughout watching this show, um, you have been like very vocal about your distaste about it. Yeah. And having finished it, like I'm not gonna say it's a good show. I don't think it's a good show, but I don't Gasp. get I don't grasp the the level of vitriol that you have. <laughs> against this show because See, at the end of the day for at least for me when i was watching it when something stupid happened or if, if something nonsensical happened personally i always just hand waved it because i'm like eh it's a See, dumb kid show. See, Daniel, Fucking it's, whatever. <laughs> Daniel, it's because Boken has such an immense respect for the original Yu-Gi-Oh <laughs> manga <laughs> yeah. that he looks at this and he goes Takahashi would never write this. <laughs> I guess. I guess. I I would. Well, while I was, I okay. I have very very complex feelings about this. Um, but <laughs> about Yu Gi Oh. While I, yeah, well, while I was watching this, it I was like, I would rather watch any other Yu Gi Oh show. Oh yeah, this Be because is the worst Yu Gi Oh show. By I find far. the card game at least interesting, and this is just bullshit. Like from start to finish, every script <laughs> in this is complete horseshit. With so many conveniences and unexplained rules, and it just made me angry. Like I, I know this is a dumb kids show, but it just makes me angry when <coughs> something is so lazily written that every conflict uh. is is like resolved with with complete horseshit. <laughs> and um, I don't know. I mean, do do we have to name examples? Like every fucking the 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 this. The card game, for example, this isn't a card game yet. It has some weird, like it has cards, but it also has a playing field. Yeah. Uh, whenever oh, they so play the, this. Yeah, true. Yeah. And, and they like, never bother to fucking explain the rules, how this works. So I was always going by the card game's rules, and those didn't apply at all. But then everything no. else I tried to, to apply also didn't work. Because well, they, it, it felt like they were legitimately, every time they played that game, they just made up the rules as they went along. Like, oh, I'm playing this card that has never been there before on the forest field. And that means that suddenly it can do this, which is very convenient right now. And well, I'm <laughs> playing this card on the rocks field. And now this can. Blah, oh, blah, my blah. God. I, yeah, I, I kind of get what you're saying. Like, I remember one move in particular that I started laughing out loud where like they like one card was a tree and then there is like a trap card that yes. made the water flow and then the tree dropped seeds and i was like what the <laughs> hell is this yeah and the and the seed <laughs> grew into vines which captured the opponent's mo so yukio at this point the card game it's just like it's it's like it's like a role playing game with trading cards almost and the original Yu-Gi-Oh, the original Yu-Gi-Oh game is total trash. Like going by the original manga rules, 
It's not until... Uh, what, what do you mean the original game? The card game that, or what they showed here? What they showed here and the card game. It's not, yeah. until, it's not until Battle City that the game actually becomes good. Because Takahashi, assumably, has sat down and he said, this needs to actually, you know, this, this can't just be about drawing cards and bullshitting your way out of, out of the encounter. You have to actually be able to apply strategy. And so the variety of card effects and the, uh, the costs of moves finally begin being calculated and you can build genuine strategies around that. Yeah. This, this trading card became popular just because like, uh, it's a trade, it's like, it's like gacha games. It's just trading cards. You want to buy them and you want to collect them. So hold on, did this game that they showed here, did it exist in real life? Yeah, so Bandai printed, uh, the earliest run of Yu-Gi-Oh cards was printed by Bandai. Um, I don't know, I don't think it was at all competitive. I think it must have just been um, something you played with your friends or something you collect because, like I said, the rules are such total shit. But and did, it, did it have the playing field? Probably not. I've never seen it. Okay. Because there, that's where most of the bullshit rules came in. Yeah. It's like, well, I, I play this on the water field. And yeah, now and it they has brought this that really weird effect. Yeah, they brought that back for uh, the first run of Yu Gi Oh! Uh, when they go to Pegasus's island. Uh, but they wisely throw that in the trash when they go to Battle City. Well, Yu Gi Oh! always had these effect cards, right? This, like, Umi, the sea. Where your, yeah. your water monsters just get plus three hundred attack or whatever. Yeah, that's that's those are just field spells. That's yeah, that's field. different from like we have to play on this field, which just so happens all of my cards really can deal with this. So you were really stupid to come and challenge me on this field. Like, if the field is only beneficial to one player, and if there are more than one variety of field, then you're not really playing a game. You're just like, it, it, one player having that much advantage is ridiculous. Sure, but that's where at least if Yugi then wins, I can understand that he outskilled his opponent. Yeah, sure. Or, or maybe he just had the better deck, whatever. But at least there's some strategy there where I understand what the rules are, which yeah, they I never feel, explained um, here. I feel in the movie... So in the movie, they wisely just adopted... Um, the Duelist Kingdom rule set, where it's just, here are your life points, you can summon monsters, there's a bunch of hand-waving bullshit around that game too, but they wisely got away with all of that extra bonus attack points from the field nonsense and just gave us a very straight up, very stripped down version of the game. Yeah, but even in the movie, um, and this is another problem, it's just, okay, I need Exodia, Oh, and I just so happened to pull out of like to draw the two Exodia cards. Right, that but that wasn't in the movie. That was in uh, the Death T arc. In the movie, he won by using uh, Red Eyes Meteor Dragon. Oh right, was that bullshit? I don't even remember. No, nah, well, see, that was that was bullshit in the sense that Yuki waited to use Red Eyes until the kid gained the courage. Like that's just an anime moment, but. No, um, Yuki used he's, he used polymerization, a real card, to summon oh, yeah, right. a real monster. And in, in a real competition, he probably would have won. There was some nonsense around Kaipa. Like, there, he, there was some point where he said, uh, like, he's had to chain his three blue eyes together so that they can exist as one monster. I, yeah. Like, yeah. I... <laughs> I have no idea what that means, why you couldn't <laughs> just summon them and have... Why would you want three blue eyes to be one monster when you can have three blue eyes? I don't know. Maybe it, it, it tripled their power. I don't it, know. But it didn't. If, if it had, then Yuki wouldn't have been able to destroy it with a nice meteor dragon. Yeah, see, that's also the fun part where uh, I remember in that episode with the witches, yeah. where it's like, oh no, our combined witch is stronger than your blue eyes dragon, so you can kill us. And then Kaiba yeah. just plays two more blue eyes dragons, and then suddenly he can attack, even though if I go by the Yu-Gi-Oh rules, then still no individual blue eyes dragon is strong enough to beat that witch. But somehow them all attacking at the same time, which also isn't a thing, somehow that <laughs> gives him the win. Like, what? See, what yeah. is the rule? <clears throat> like I said, that 
That didn't happen in the manga. That's a uh, Bandai original. And then yeah, I feel like that's a lot of this anime. It's just uh, the the anime stu- studio just coming up with bullshit on the fly, and they're just like, "Well, we, we you know this needs to be a twenty six episode series, right? We, <laughs> there's not enough content in the manga. Just just fuck it. Just fucking throw oh, some no. shit in no, there. No, no. They there was more content in the manga. They cut a lot out." And replaced it with... Because they... Bandai <laughs> they replaced can, it what? with all shit? What? Well, oh. because Bandai... As I'm, here's my prediction. Or my... Uh, here's my deductive reasoning. Bandai did not finance for this game... For this anime to be made. So that people could watch Joey or Yugi stab a shoe with a knife. They, they financed it so that they could sell their Bandai Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So they, they said... You have 27 episodes... And you can adapt like six, seven chapters of the manga, and the rest have to be about the Yu-Gi-Oh trading cards. But the trading cards weren't in it that much. I mean, there were no. like what maybe four or five episodes where they actually played it, and then yeah, yeah, but they only the showed up. The... They only showed up uh, in in against Kaipa in Death Tea and the first time they fought Kaipa. In this one, they also had Yuki dueling, uh, what was it, his teacher or some... No, it was that puppet lady, um, that sexy puppet lady that Kaipa hired the puppeteer for. It was against the witches. It was against... Um, uh, I feel like there his was... His grandfather. I feel like there were more... Like Anyways, there were, there were more um, Yu-Gi-Oh duels in this thing than there were in uh, the manga. Yeah, more, but still not. If if this is just a marketing ploy, then it should have been every episode, but it wasn't. Yeah, yeah. like I don't, I don't, I don't. The know majority if... of the episodes were random bullshit. Like, oh, we're <laughs> going to take out roses from this bouquet. <laughs> yeah, and that that is the other part where. Yeah, I, th- I don't think that popularity contest was in the manga either. But I think that's a fine resolution that Yuki, like, no, you said of all the roses you have, not the ones you're holding, and he takes one out of her hair. It's yeah, like, hey, uh, he's, he's fucking clever. evil. Yu-Gi-Oh's, Yugi's so evil. Like, he just oh, tricks yeah, he... people. It's not like he's smarter, he just tricks people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> he, Pretty he much. He's a trickster. Uh, he's a dark gambling spirit, as the manga <laughs> put it. So, I okay, I, I just wanted to bring this up real quick. Uh, the episode where the guy enters... Uh, yugi's mind palace or whatever and he's like walking around and there's traps and stuff mm. that was 100 percent an episode in dual monsters as well yeah that's that's from the original mo- so because the dual monsters anime that did, that didn't do any of the season zero stuff they had to sort of reintegrate that in other episodes so you have shoddy entering yugi's mind um in Duelist Kingdom, there's a, there's an episode or two where Yugi duels against Bakora and all of Yugi's friends turn into the monsters. That's just the end of Yu-Gi-Oh! Season Zero. Like that is the tabletop RPG in the original. Yeah, manga. yeah. I was gonna say. Yeah. I was gonna say. Uh, I remember something about the tabletop RPG also being in the show, but different. Yeah. Be- because in the manga, Bakora just went with them to the island because he was their friend. Be- like mm-hmm. because he's not he's not dual he's not a competitor in the uh in the anime, which is why it's so strange that he's on the island. And yeah, they uh uh Kaipa's backstory I believe was also taken to DM from this, uh even though they kind of just did a hatchet job of explaining it here that like his father committed suicide when Kaipa took over the company. Yeah. It's a pretty good show. Yeah. I think we all enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I feel like I s- even even the games outside the main card game are a lot of nonsense. I would they, say yeah. I mean, I would I say can agree. some of them. Uh, even in I the can, manga, some of them were kind of bullshit. I can agree with that, we, but I at least admire the creativity of like, hey, you know, we're gonna the 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 structure is uh, hey, we're gonna come up with some crazy, wacky, zany thing every episode, and even though they're not really all that successful i i think it's at least a cool idea and i appreciate the ingenuity 
and the creativity of some of the games, even yeah. though, yeah, they're very, <laughs> very convenient and dumb. It is a cool idea, and that's why I'm kind of mad about the show, because I can see how the show would work out if it was well written, but it just isn't. Like a lot of the... Con if we see this as a shonen show where the fighting is the main part, then yeah. you can't have a good fight if you don't understand the rules and if the resolutions are just just convenient to the plot <laughs> and... <laughs> And like they they just come up with some nonsense every time, right? Like okay. that that is that is not a satisfying fight and not yeah. a satisfying conclusion, and that's an issue. And, uh, and that is a big issue. Can I tell you one of my favorite games that they played in the manga that they for some reason didn't bring back here? Sure. Okay. There's a there's there's one episode where Joey is gonna buy sneakers, and it's like a rare limited edition sneakers, and he goes to the special store and buys them. And the guy who runs the sneaker store has, uh, he has a gang under his employee, which just steal the sneakers back from Joey so that he can sell them again. I don't know, I don't know how that works, but there it is. And it ends with Yugi and the guy. Um, so the guy has like a knife pulled on Yugi, and there Yugi like takes out a bunch of coins from his, uh, um, from his uh, pocket, and he puts them in the sneaker. And the dude also owns a pet scorpion, and the scorpion is put into the sneaker too. And the, the idea is, both of us are going to take out coins now, and the one who has more coins by the end of things, he's going to win. And I don't remember what was at stake exactly. Probably like your soul being sent to the Shadow Realm or something. And I really like, so it just, Yugi takes one coin, the guy takes one coin, Yugi takes one coin, and like, there's really high stakes in there because there's a scorpion in the shoe. And the dude then goes, oh, hey, he just stabs the front of the shoe to kill the scorpion and then takes all the coins. Except, oops, now that your hands are full, you can't get your hand out of the shoe and you didn't actually stab the scorpion. So now the scorpion is going to stab you. Like, I, what? I like no, the, no, what now that your hands are full? What? Yeah, because he took he took all the coins that were in the shoe. And because he he's palming so many things, he can no longer fit out the shoe with his palm. So those are the sorts of games that I like, where Yugi wins because he actually there's actually some uh, clever thing he does. There's another one. Uh, I don't even I don't I don't understand. Well, yeah, I'm I, having a hard time understanding the rules, uh, uh, but that like it's why do, it's probably just easier to understand. Why do you need to feel it. out the shoe? Because no, the coins and the scorpion are in the shoe. Yeah. So you and need you, to you need to put your hand into the shoe and take grab a coin. Yeah, yeah. And, and he he took a he took a handful because he wasn't yeah, he, afraid of the scorpion. No, he he stabbed the shoe with his knife. Good yeah. God! It's like I'm having to explain Yu-Gi-Oh to five-year-olds over here. <laughs> no, he stabs the shoe with his knife to kill the scorpion, and then he just takes tries to take all the coins, but he his hand is too full, like because he's uh, holding so many coins that he can't get it out of the shoe again. And now he's kind of stuck in it, and the scorpion wasn't actually stabbed, and it goes in for uh, to stab him. How the yeah. fuck can you? Uh, how do you not like get that. your hand out of the shoe? Because the shoe have you is never... designed to be opened so that you can easily get inside and outside. Like it, it, it's flexible. I feel like I feel like you're being a bit too anal about the setup. <laughs> like it's <laughs> assumably the, mean. assumably the shoelaces are tied. Like it's the same. It's the same game as uh, because this game exists in some other format where um, yeah, I don't think you're grabbing coins. I think you're like grabbing rocks out of a bucket or something. It's a similar setup. It's if you if you can get your foot in, because it's a shoe, then you can, you, you can get your you're, head in. You're and you're fist you're, out. you're you're focusing too much on it being in a shoe. No, but that's what I mean with. This doesn't make any sense, Asa. This isn't good. This it it doesn't. Does, just you. You have to. You have to accept the fact that this is an. This is an. This is a manga. This is an anime, and like that's the parameter we're operating in here. Like, assumably, if they if they were if they if he wanted to, he could have had that be like a plastic shoe. Like it's a model of a shoe that's made out of plastic or made out of s steel. It's some kind of shoe trophy. And then, like, it's just, that's 
Like I, like I said, that's the parameter of the show. I, I should have picked a better example. You got way too yeah, hung up on the shoe. No, because he's, you are saying this is a good example because Yugi is outsmarting the opponent, but he's yeah. not. He's not yeah, yes. anticipating this at all. And the the way the opponent loses sounds like nonsense. No, he, he did anticipate it. He anticipated the guy's greed and that his greed would do him in because he tried to take all the coins. That it is a shoe is incidental to the game. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you another game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. So this is... you. Um, Duke Devlin shows up. This is... Uh, and he, like, plays a, this gambling game with Joey where he puts all four spa uh, all four aces of a regular 52-card deck, puts them all face down, along with... Um, I think he puts one joker... No, uh, he doesn't put a joker there. He just puts all four aces face down. And the game is... Uh, if you can, you have to flip two of them up, and if you can get, uh, like, two, both reds or both blacks, you win. And Joey loses this game over and over and over again, and then he, he, uh, he challenges Yuki. And Yuki goes, I'll play your game, but you have to put in a joker. Do you guys understand, like, do you get how Yuki is actually outsmarting him by doing that? No, please explain. Okay, do you, do you understand how the scam works before the joker is put into the deck? No. I think we're focusing too much on this. I also okay, don't understand so, it, though. No, okay, so w the, the, uh, a, a very quick estimate of the game, you flip two cards up, and it's a 50-50 shot. Yeah. But actually, it's not, because if you just flip one card up, then you have, say, one red. And now, the chance that you'll flip the other red card up is one in third. It was, it's one in three. And so if you play this game 30 times statistically you're only going to be successful 10 times whereas your opponent is going to win 20 because it's a one in three game not a 50 50. and by when yuki tells him to add the joker in he increases his own odds because um uh, I, I think he also added like a stipulation that if you draw the joker you lose or something like that and then it's like oh i i'm drawing my cards before you are and that means, statistically, you have fewer cards to choose from, ergo, you'll pick up the Joker before I do. Those are the sorts of... That's the sort of stuff that I like about early Yu-Gi-Oh! Whereas, this fucking bullshit where, um... Like, the popularity contest... Um... Well, no, I, th I think that's a fine resolution with a rose, but... That's are, kind of a... That's not even a game, that's just a trick. Yeah, that's a trick. But like that's a fun that's a fun trick. Even though I don't think that was in the manga, that whole popularity contest arc. Well, it was all about Miho, so it was definitely it couldn't have been. <laughs> but yeah, there there are so many dumb games in this. Like for example, yeah. uh the the very first one where they have where they're hanging on this rope and he just puts down a bunch of cards. And yeah. if you if you uh draw a low one, you just fall even further. And no, that's not what it was. It's, it was when you pick one, you go up based on the number. You just if you get a nine. You oh, go and up the other person steps. goes down. Right. The other so, person goes down. Yeah. So so if, if you pick yeah. a low number, you only go go up a little, and then the other one picks a high one. You go down a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, um, that's just gambling, first. Yeah. And and the way is somewhat like it feels like you cheated because. The guy just keeps drawing low numbers. It's not like Yuki <laughs> outsmarted him. It's like he cheated to have the like the the bottom. Well, of he's the a row. gambling spirit. Yeah, but it's it's like he he has the bottom of the row uh, specifically handpicked to only be low cards. So if you fucked up once, you're just going to go lower and lower. <laughs> I mean, no, that's assu that's assuming that Yugi intentionally gave him shitty cards. Yeah, you know, I know. I that's think... why I said it, it seems very unlikely that he would always pick low cards, but that's exactly what happens. I don't and remember. Smart. I, I don't remember if they did that in the manga. Um, I don't remember exactly what game they played because the resolution of that episode is very different from what it was in the manga. In the manga, he's like bathing himself in trash because he's been hypnotized to think trash is money or something. Here he gets eaten by a giant water worm and then just becomes shell shocked. Can we also talk about how Yugi is just mind breaking all these people? Like, isn't that yeah. kind of fucked up? Like, yeah. I like I get that he's trying to teach him a lesson. Like, like that one lady who wanted to enforce all those rules for some reason. Like, we don't know what her deal is. She's a woman, um, so she's evil. That's the explanation. I, you get. Uh, 
I don't know about that, Chief. But actually, it's true. I I do think there's another point I want to talk about that the show is extremely sexist. Uh, but I do have to rescind that point because there are positive female characters, even outside well, the two main ones. Well, Bogan, let me tell you something. If you like fucking pantsu jokes about anime girl underwear, you should read the original manga because there are like five of them in the original run. <laughs> Uh, right. The show Go is on. the show is the original manga yeah. is more sexist than the uh, manga, I think. But it's also like it's written by some Japanese nerd, some Japanese like fucking arcade game nerd in the late '80s or something. It sure feels but, like uh, this. The, the, but the point I was trying to make was so like I feel like each of the not every time, but like <clears> I feel <throat> like a lot of the punishments are supposed to be punishment for. Uh, like a severe character flaw of that individual. So like you have the one woman who's very vain. So mm -hmm. her punishment is that she, uh, every time she looks in the mirror, it looks like her face is cracking. Um, yeah. yeah, that we, we keep talking about the girl with the bouquet. She thinks that uh, her skin is all wrinkly. Yeah. Um, there's, um, there's probably more examples, but a lot of these have to do with like, you know, oh, you're, you're too greedy or you're, you're too whatever. And yes. here's your punishment. Now, now your punishment reflects your, your flaw. I, I think that, I don't think that's an inherently bad idea because like, if you consider this a kid show, uh, although sometimes I have to admit, sometimes it gets kind of fucked up and it makes me consider like, is this really a kid show? <laughs> Give but, me an example. What? Give me an example of when it goes fucked up. You mean like when shoddy murders that man? Yeah, when the guy gets eaten. <laughs> you mean like when uh, the 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 university student is going after a minor, and he has like a a rape dungeon. That sort of fucked up. Wait, oh, the yo-yo episode. Rape, rape dungeon. Yeah, no, not the yo-yo episode. The one with a who's always eating a lollipop. Oh, you're talking about the guy who is obsessed with Miho. Yeah, who looks like he's falling. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And, and oh he, yeah, and he had like a giant. He has this warehouse with a with yeah. a cage that he can just, like he can just block the entrance. See, see that yeah. one. See that one was also, uh, to your point, Boke, and That episode's a good example of how bullshit the design of some of these games are. Yeah. Where like where Yugi was just like, oh, I have your, you know, the this specific one that has this specific ability that allows me to just kill all of them in one go. <laughs> Which is it's like the, the, if if that is a move that the the viewer knows about that that could happen, and then it's like, oh my god, he actually pulled it off. He tricked him into that position. Then that that is a smart move to play. But we don't know the rules of this game, and we don't know what these individual pieces can even do. So it's just like, no, well, no. this is how I win. Hope you yeah, are surprised. Yeah, I do think that's a flaw with. I do think that's a flaw with a lot of these games, where it feel it kind of comes across to me like they didn't want to do something too simplistic, so they do something like really needlessly convoluted to make it seem more unique and interesting. Yeah, definitely. But in by but by doing so, they have to come up with these contrivances in order to. Um, to have a victory. And yeah. I think it would have been more interesting if the games were more simplistic and like we keep coming back to the bouquet one, but you know, it, it kind of worked in that regard where it's a very simple game, but Yugi just did a, just tricked the person in order to win. Yeah. Like, I think if there were more games in that vein where they're very easy to grasp, but then Yugi does something that's outside of the box that yeah. you wouldn't normally think of, and that's how he wins. I think if more games were like that, it would be a lot better than just, oh, we're going to have these <laughs> bottles hanging from uh, the ceiling, and then we're going to slice them, and then we're going to have to grab them. There's and a like, bottle of chloroform, and I yeah. guess if you fuck it up, if you, if you fuck up catching it, you're going to immediately faint? Would it, uh, what? Would it, would it surprise so you guys? It's so weird. Would it surprise so you guys with that uh, capsule monster episode? Would it surprise you if I told you that all of the explanation of the rules is actually, it's like, they front load that in the manga. There's just like four or five pages that are just like, here are the rules of this game. And that's not in the fucking anime because they didn't adapt that part of the manga. <laughs> yeah, well, great. Because in the anime, it's just, <laughs> it's just, no, you're going to pick five monsters and you better hope you get a bunch of level fives. Otherwise yep. you're already fucked from the start. <clears throat> yeah. And, uh, 
I'll, I'll say something about that particular episode because it is very rapey. That uh, that story is in the original manga, but Miho isn't in it, and there's no rapey part. It's not Yuki fighting this date raping forty year old pedophile. No, it's Yuki meets Mokuba, Seto Kaipa's little brother, and Mokuba challenges him to a game because. Mokuba is pissed mad that his brother is catatonic after Yuki fucking mind crushed him. <laughs> okay, no, he's so not I do remember. He's not catatonic I, at that point. He's just evil. So I do remember something about Mokuba in the Dual Monsters show having a thing for these capsule monsters. So that does make uh, sense. That's well, he, you're he plays... misremembering. I don't think it. I don't think that was in. No, the, he uh, plays. He plays Kabumon in uh, the Death Tea episode. Yeah, he, he, he no, he, yeah, he he also did that in the manga. He challenges him in Death T, but he also challenged him before. Like the Death yeah. T fight is a rematch. So I guess it makes sense that Mokuba is the opponent. Like he's playing Kapumon yeah. against Yugi in yeah. the end. Oh, oh, you meant in this? I thought you were talking about in Daniel. I thought you were talking about in the DM anime. Yeah, Daniel. Uh, no, I th- Daniel said dual monsters. I think he might be no, yeah, misremembering. Yeah. I might be misremembering, but like I thought I remembered something about Mokuba being a fan of Capsule Monsters, but I, I guess th- maybe I'm just misremembering. Yeah, he's barely a character in the uh, in the DM manga. But even DM anime. even with Mokuba, and this is man, I, there there are so many nitpicks I could bring here, but that also just made me so mad. Where when Mokuba fights Yugi and, and Capsule Monsters, and then mm. you you guys remember that one move where uh, Mokuba attacks Yugi's mole monster. And then mm-hmm. the mole monster, like it has, apparently it has the special ability to just dig into the ground. And then the yeah. attack whiffs and it just happens to uh, go further into Mokuba's other monster. So he kills his own two monsters at the same time. Yes. And it's like, you're supposed to be a good player at this. How do you not know <laughs> what the mole monster does? Well, like that, that no, is such I a basic that, move. Yeah, see, the, no, the, no, because, because the prob- Mokuba because Mokuba only uses the high powered monsters. He has the same right. he has the same problem as his brother, where he doesn't respect the full spectrum of the game because he only looks at it as the most powerful, the absolute strongest. So see, you have little, to also yeah. understand that this is not this is also a kids show for the most part um, and it's trying to teach lessons to kids right so the lesson that's trying to teach kids here is look just because you have the best monsters and you think you have like uh, you know the best whatever that's not a substitute for actually understanding how the game works yeah. you have to actually understand the rules which is ironic when you consider the rest <laughs> of the show. Yeah. no but which but, is ironic with the, well yeah okay it's, but, it's, but ironic again, in this. It's, it's just it's trying to get across that lesson of like hey just having the best monsters is is not good enough you need to learn how things work it's yeah. apparently not it, it, that's a powerful move to just dodge an attack like th- th- that's apparently that seems to be a strong monster so you should know about this if you're a world-class player which they imply he is no because i i can imagine um See, that's kind of like sh- rocking up to an actual Yu-Gi-Oh! tournament and using a card like Magic Cylinder or something. A card which, yes, it is powerful, but this card in and of itself doesn't do anything. Like the mole, if you're playing this game competitively, you wouldn't use the mole. You, you, you do not add pieces to your board that do not give you some sort of advantage. And you, you always want to be in control of the game, and a monster that only exists to defend itself doesn't do anything for you. This is uh, so I can imagine uh, that the mole being like, if that were a Yu-Gi-Oh card, that's something that somebody might use as a gimmick against more powerful decks, but it uh, doesn't actually have. It, it, it's not useful in a competitive setting, even though it like you can probably cheat a couple of wins out of it because nobody is expecting it or something. I don't know. As but, someone but who follows a lot, of, a lot of competitive games, that is such a rookie mistake. No actual competitive player would ac- ever do that. And also, well, isn't, it, pa- isn't part it, of it this depends, game... It depends it, on how many... Uh, like, it's, it's, dif- it's different between competitive games because, like, maybe there are 100,000 different Capumon monsters. So you don't... Nobody knows what all of them do. But, but, the, but <laughs> right. my, my, my Yukio analogy... It kind of falls to the wayside because 
a big point of Yu-Gi-Oh is that your opponent doesn't know the cards you're using <laughs> when he swings into them. So like, he he Mokuba surely should have had the right to ask, hey. What are your what are your monsters yeah, do? Yeah, there should be a rule book somewhere. But uh, isn't isn't part of the design of capsule monsters that you don't get to decide what your monsters are? You need to to draw the capsules first. I think no. I think that's just something Mokuba did to cheat Yuki into using low level monsters well, while he himself. But that's also what the Rapey guy did. He also had a had the. I thought that's part of the game design. Is this this big um, dispenser? Where you need to I, to draw your your capsules first, and then you play. Yeah, I, I, so I'm pretty sure in the original manga, they like yeah, they both just get them assorted randomly. But Mokuba like he stacks his capsule up with um, his dispenser up with powerful ones and Yuki's with low level ones. They may have just you know incorporated actual randomness into the anime. I'm not I I wasn't paying that. Yeah, much but but attention. that's my point is uh, if the dispenser is part of the game. Like if you don't get to pick your monsters, but you need to, you, it's luck. Then a good player would know what all the th all the monsters do because he has to yeah, play with all of them. Yeah, at least the ones. Yeah, but uh, like he would know at least the ones that are in the dispenser, seeing as he's the one. Who, like yeah, I, I agree with you, Boken, to the point that there's no excuse for Mokuba having setting up the dispenser and choosing Yuki's shit monsters, not knowing what they do. And that's where I think this is so much worse than the card game because I, 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 the, the card game anime. I'm sure there are a lot of fights in the card game anime that are also horse shit where just rules are negated and, and they do whatever. <laughs> like one problem with the card game, and it's also a problem in here, is they keep playing cards. They keep playing th three to four cards per, pl per turn and somehow they mm -hmm. still have five cards on the hand every time. Like it's never shown how much they actually draw. Well, uh, uh, in the I can tell you in the original Yu-Gi-Oh, like in the DM anime, I I think there's only one example of them accidentally adding a card to a player's hand. Okay. Here, it I don't know I don't know because again these aren't the manga battles. But but I remember in, in the manga in the manga there was like a tally card like of cards held and stuff like that. Okay, I I remember in the in the card game man, uh, anime. Where there were actual smart fights with resolutions, where like one enemy has this sort of strategy where he has an infinitely uh, or an, an unbeatable monster that keeps reshaping itself, and every time oh, you're talking, you're talking about uh, the Slifer battle, where he yeah, keeps the, drawing. Yeah, the, the bald guy. Yeah, that keeps drawing, and then he ke Yugi can't kill his monster, so instead he just sets up the cards so that his monster keeps attacking the monster over and over and the guy has to keep drawing cards over and over and he loses yeah, because he, he's out of cards in his, in his yeah he deck. yuki see that that's where yuki was at its best when like yuki won because he just manipulated the rules of the game to make the other player deck in a really out. smart way yeah yeah that's satisfying yeah. this however is not that no no <laughs> that's why i got so mad <laughs> but um, okay, so so we got back to the games again, which I didn't even want. But uh, another thing <laughs> that I want to complain about is that you could have these uh, an anime where Yugi keeps beating people at simple games, and I feel like it the games should be set up more that they reflect the personality of the the person he's fighting. Like if yeah. if you want to have this be a kids show and you want to teach them sort of moral lessons, then Yuki should trick these people by abusing their bad personality traits. That yeah, it happens sometimes. For example, with a teacher lady, where he's like, "Oh no, you you just I I bait you into breaking the rules. Even you are the teacher who wants to have even even harder rules in the school over and over. But if it's convenient, you're the first to break them." Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then he sends them yeah. to the shadow realm. Like that. That and is. That's a. Yeah. That's that's obviously something that's much easier. Like that's how it works in DM because then they can just we we will design each character's deck to reflect their personality. So like, Kaipa in Battle City, he he has a lot more monsters. He has the XYZ monsters. He has Gadget Soldier because he's all about like ruthlessly pursuing the future and destroying the past. Yuki has. Like beasts and fiends and these weird sorcerers because he's this dark and mystical character. Joey has luck cards. Merrick has torture cards. Bakora has like occult cards. It's, uh, it's way more um, 
like yeah, they they manage to incorporate the personalities into the actual cards so that they are ref- that they are reflected in the games that they play. Whereas here, it's it's often just a crapshoot of oh yeah, Yuki just tricked some guy into into pouring a bunch of bourbon on himself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then he <laughs> drops the lighter. Yeah, that's also that's also in the uh, in the manga. And and for uh, example, see, I, I, the the game. I thought would... that one was at least kind of clever. Yeah. Uh, it was really weirdly set up. I don't know. It was, but at <laughs> least it wasn't like complete total bullshit of just like, ooh, here's this thing you never even knew about coming. It's like, yeah, he outsmarted the person in that scenario, even though it was weird. It was at least something something yeah, I, somewhat clever i feel yeah. the anime probably would have played better if like at some point they would have just somebody would have set you down and would have explained so yuki has the power to make people agree to play the games as well because i don't think yes it, yeah because sometimes most of the it, time, it does feel like why is this adult this fucking actual like grown-up person agreeing like <laughs> yes let let me play this game with this literal child <laughs> <laughs> yeah but also or, or the other way around where uh this in this Capamon uh, episode with a with a rapey uh 40 year old yeah. where yeah. he's like no mio chan we need to be together now and in, in Miho, instead of saying, no, fuck you, I'm calling the police and I'm leaving, she just actually agrees to play him. Yeah. And, and like, <laughs> probably become a slave well, in a game that she doesn't well, even know. Point, at, no, wait, at some point she does try to leave and then he brings down the fucking gate or whatever. Yeah, but that's, and, that's <laughs> after. I leave. think that's after she agrees. Like, her first instinct is not, no, I'm leaving and I'm calling the police. Yeah, true. Yeah, so that's that's one little uh, nitpick that I agree with. Just make it clear <laughs> from the get-go that Yuki's dual power means that he can also encourage other people to play him. Yeah, because they're greedy I, or they're, they're vain, they want to win. All yeah. that, and, and then he uses I, the, the yeah. personalities against them in some way. I think it would have been cool if he had like an aura or something and like you had like a, a bit of dialogue or a bit of inner monologue where the character goes like, Normally, I would turn him down because it's ridiculous, but there's something about <laughs> him that compels me to want to uh, to play this game with him or something. Sure. Normally, I would... Now, normally, when I would be challenged to a gamble while I'm in the middle of robbing a burger place, I'd say no. But this kid has a weird aura. I'll, I'll, I'll see where this goes. <laughs> And there's then, just something about this kid. It makes me want to play games. Um, but yeah, the, for example, the, the game with the roses, where you count the roses. That's not reflective of that person's personality at all. No. Nah. And, no. and then, for example, the, the uh, abusive doctor that likes to play golf. Like, yeah, they're playing golf, but the way y- Yugi wins is not in some See, smart way where he he abuses well, that doctor's personality it's just no, oh, no. i found this this trash chute that conveniently places my <laughs> ball right at the door that that episode yeah. is not in the manga i just want to put that out there <laughs> i will not defend that <laughs> i i did think it was kind of funny that joey wheeler was trying to put the moves and just failed utterly mm. spectacularly <laughs> and at the end of the episode completely blue balled uh, and cucked by some other I doctor. Thought, I thought it was funny that uh, that Tristan, like Tristan, was gonna help him, and he gave him something to give her, and it was just lingerie. It's like I, that's that's a funny like joke where that was, you you yeah, fuck your friend funny. over by. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I really. Oh my god, though, I hated Tristan so much the yeah. whole time. He was just obsessed with Miho, and I. And he was also obsessed with being a beautician. Was that a thing in the manga too? A beautification member. So Tristan in the manga obviously wasn't in love with Miho. In the manga, he's just like a straight man to Joey's antics. And he's he's also sort of a troublemaker, but he's also on like the, the school board of the, 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 the body president of the students. And he's, he's, he's like a bit of a stiff... But he's also like one of the guys, and he's like, like I said, a straight man to Joey's antics. 
this so he was was he a beautification whatever i don't, member I don't in the remember manga as well i don't remember maybe but like if he was i don't think it's like i said it's not it wasn't important enough to his character that I remember it. But in, in this, it's every episode. Like either, oh, yeah. Mio oh, Chan, yeah. or oh, my beautification job. He, he has nothing else. <laughs> that's all. He, it, that's his entire character is just those two things. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. that's okay. Another point that I hate about the show the characters are so one dimensional and it's, they're so predictable. Oh, yeah. I this know every I reaction they're going to have before it's yeah. even happening. And it's so annoying. So you remember that yo-yo episode that yeah. Joey, uh, he was like the yo-yo king. That was like a much bigger deal in the manga where it was like, no, Joey was like an actual <laughs> at-risk youth who came from a really broken home. And like he somehow just locked out of all of that bad life. And he came to Domino High School and he met uh, Tristan and like, he, him being a really at-risk youth when he was a kid is a big deal about who his character is. And as he develops through the manga, like it, it, it's constantly being you know brought back where he goes from being this absolute washout to actually making something of himself, to learning to care about other people, to entering a tournament, to pay for his sister's eye operation and stuff. Like, like he has a genuine growth of character. This is just like... Oh, Joey, he's a silly guy. We'll we'll do that. Ching, check. Tristan, oh, he doesn't have a personality. We'll make him in love with Miho, who's a new character. Whereas, like, no, he, he does have a personality in the original. He He's just, he's just not, he's just not a wacky anime character in the original. So I, I hated the characterization of everyone except yeah. maybe Teya and maybe Yugi. I think she's, those were... She's super boring, though. She's super boring, but uh, she's like they—they they didn't. She's not annoying. She's yeah, she's not, not like... annoying, and this is not an unfaithful like. This is a dumbed down version, but it's not unfaithful to who she is as a character. Can, okay, S can I just say though? Okay. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck was up with trying to hide the the Yugi transformations throughout the show? Was that in the manga as well? Uh, oh, that she never saw it was him. Like, cause throughout the show. Like there's all uh, again with the convenience thing. It's like, oh, he just so happened to be just outside uh, of the room or whatever where the, <laughs> his friends are, and they don't see him transform and be all cool and stuff. And yeah, that, so in in the original get... in the manga, they didn't really play that up as much. Yugi just decided, like they just went, oh wow, Yugi's really assertive right now. The only character where it was ever a secret from was Teya because. It was pretty much like they did in the anime, where he saves her and she's like, oh, what's this voice? And then I think it's once more he saves her and then she realizes, oh, it's Yugi. But it's this other Yugi that isn't Yugi. Because the original Yu-Gi-Oh! is really about like this, this, this innocent kid and this dark spirit that rests within him and the struggle of being torn in two. And like, it's, it's about things. It has <laughs> ideas it wants to explore. Whereas this, it's just like... What if that, but for kids? Yeah. This is, oh my God. Yugi himself was so, so annoyingly pure. Yeah. <laughs> like, Jesus, what a sucker. Oh my God. No, Yugi was cool. What do you mean? Do you remember that episode where, uh, where, No, I uh, mean Yami Yugi. I mean normal Yugi. I like Yami Yugi. He's like a, he's oh. like a trickster spirit. He's yeah, just, he's, he's like, just a force of, like, of chaos. <laughs> He's a, like Loki. Uh, yeah, Yami Yugi is pretty awesome. I love even in uh, this show. I love that animation of his shadow with just like the eye of Vijat on the forehead and the lit up eyes. I love a, that. Whenever how it do you up. have light on a shadow? It's magic. Stop that. It's, <laughs> I don't think it's real. I think it's supposed to be you know symbolic. Yeah. Oh. Okay, uh. Roger Ebert. <laughs> <laughs> Can we Take also can, can we talk about how fucking weird the show is about Taya and and the uh, in the episode where they go to the amusement park 
and they draw her like super fucking sexy or whatever. And even Joey Wheeler's is like, damn, I didn't know Taya had such a dynamite body. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then in the next fucking episode, uh, they have that girl. What's her name? Andrea. She's the, uh, the pop star or whatever. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and then and then all of a sudden in this episode, Taya is drawn like she's a little kid, just like Yugi. <laughs> Because she's yeah. because yeah. not because this girl's supposed to be because this girl's supposed to be way sexier by comparison. Yeah, she's like a supermodel. Here's the yeah. thing. Here's the thing, it Daniel. Was so weird. Guess which one of those episodes is out of continuity. Guess which one actually happened in the manga and which one didn't. Well, I know it's the the model one doesn't happen because you said that Kaiba yeah. the, the the henchmen of Kaiba weren't in the manga. Yeah, it's really funny in the manga where he draws Teya as like. So I, I feel very uncomfortable with this aspect of it because Taya is like, I think she's like 16 or 17 or something. Um, and Yugi, I think, is like 14. And whenever you look at the two of them together, it's like, that's a grown-up woman and that's an eight-year-old child. Kid. But why are they in the yeah. same class? I think yeah, Yugi but is that, like, but Yugi uh, has like a crush on placement her. or something. But y- Yugi clearly has a crush on her and, and wants to be with her. And yeah. she's like, she's like, but that Yami Yugi, though. <laughs> yeah. Also, somehow, she, I think she sees Yami Yugi at least once, if not twice. And she doesn't recognize that it's Yugi, even though most other people do when they see him. Oh, I didn't notice that. No, I don't remember that. I know she had, like, I see got a partial glimpse of him uh yeah we keep cutting the, back uh, to that partial when she's glimpse. in the ferris wheel and um she kind of sees him a little bit but she's far away and then she tr- tries to figure out what happened i think well uh, i don't know i might be wrong yes that she then she tries to trigger the transformation right but it doesn't work yeah whatever yeah. um can we talk about how sexist the show is sure i think we already did well I, I think it goes deeper than that. Oh, First okay. of all, okay. we've talked about the, the Bechdel test before, right? You guys remember what that is? Yeah, I no. remember. It's the, the one test? where girls have to talk together about yeah, something the, the that's Bechdel not a guy. Yeah, the Bechdel test, where a show uh, passes the test if you can point out a single scene where two female characters talk to one another and there is no male character present, and the talk isn't about a male character. Mm. I feel like you can, you can probably find some scene that's like that, but uh, like, not in this show. Yeah, I, you you probably can. There's probably a scene where, uh, like in the uh, no. in the beauty contest show, there's probably like one scene where they're like, "Oh, I'm gonna be the cutest of the girls," or "I'm gonna be the one." No. But uh, but uh, I feel because it's all so, about the male characters. Even yeah, that. well, see, th- that that's the thing. Um, I don't know if that's sexist or that's just what what a manga and anime was at that time. Because well, this it's is sexist. Very, no, but well, this is uh, this is uh, this, uh, this is written for boys. Yeah, and yeah, that's just the clearly. Like, well, no, it's not a problem because like you can. There are other manga from that era which are very explicitly written for girls. And I don't think that makes it inherently sexist. I think for it to be sexist, um, it would have to have incorporated... Um, because I think, the, I think the female characters, like, they, they exist as their own characters, too. Like, Teya isn't just there fawning over Yugi. I, 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 that is what I disagree with. I think all, right. all, the, all, all the female characters have nothing going on in their life. Except to be a love interest for, or like a, a romantic interest in some way. I to feel uh, male characters. No, well, you have the uh, the hex sisters. In the beginning of that episode, they're all talking together about like they're making that crazy potion or whatever. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, they're they're not. It, those sisters are cl- never talk anything about like, ooh, I want to date that cute Kaiba. <laughs> no, but or but like, what do they do? They start dating Yugi. Yeah, they're just but, trying to steal that card, though. Yeah, yeah but, but they're not, but they're still, not, not because they want to, but yeah, they're just trying to get his card. They're is, trying to take advantage of It is still framed in a way where she is his girlfriend now. I don't think it's sexist. I think sexism... Uh, but it's, I think it, it's, I think it's there's used a bridge as, to sexism. A, as, a, as a way to deceive him, 
It's not yeah, because no, no, I she know, actually wants to. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm agreeing with you that uh, there are better and worse examples, but even the witches, which are a better example of g female characters having at least some kind of agency, it's still through the lens of, oh my God, Yugi has a girlfriend now. Even you that. Can also, we can also point to that uh, the Indian Canadian uh, supermodel. Yeah, who comes in who comes into the country and the first thing that happens is she meets a guy who wants to fuck her yeah yeah mm, and then well, she and then she, she tries to play. To, then she tries to get <laughs> to yugi yes yeah, she, no she's kaipa hired her to duel yugi yeah i know that's it's, not that's not i feel like what i, what I, I like, found uh, really weird about her though was the way that she ended the episode was that She's like, I'm going to come for you again, Yugi, but this time it will be for love. <laughs> what, did she say that? <laughs> she did. That oh, was man. the last thing she said in the episode. Surely, I was well, like, I, I, just, no, fuck. No. I just watched that episode like a few hours ago. I don't remember that. That's literally the last thing she says. She, she'll be like, I'm going to, I want to battle you again, y Yugi, but next time it will be a battle of love. I think my subtitle must have said something different. But like, no, no, I'm, I'm telling you. I'll, I'll check it out after we're done editing, after we're done. Uh, I, for, I forget what episode that one is, so it's I can't one... check real quick. But... No, I, I, uh, I, I should have it in my cache. But yeah, there's no... But I distinctly remember this. Because I remember thinking it was super weird. The... It's even I... weirder now that you mentioned she wasn't in the manga, so like... So what what the hell are they doing <laughs> throwing that in there? Like... <laughs> They're setting up uh, a returning character who never shows up again. <laughs> no, she yeah. do, what she does appear again in the end of the show, but as like uh for that fight, for that like that fighting game weird oh my fight God. in the Death T where she's fighting against Joey. Well, they get HP back because of the power of friendship. <laughs> yeah. That's how they win. <laughs> Do you want to talk about what the original Death Tea was? No, hold on. Okay. I want to talk about this other thing first. Oh, like, I'm still on the sexism point, to be honest. Uh, uh, yu gi -Oh, yu gi -Oh isn't sexist. It's very, like, Japanese-y with, like, traditional gender roles and stuff, but it doesn't have that I, sort of... I, to me, that's sexist. Sorry, but if, uh, if, the, if, all the female, if all the female characters in this care only about shopping and being popular and beautiful... And all the relations, like even Joey's sister is just there to be s sort of saved by him or to be cared for by him. And then you have the, the nurse, which also is just there so he can get his moves on. Like it, it just yeah, but, it keeps happening. And what, what bothers you me... Also have, uh, you, all, you have... So there are more characters who show up later on, which sort of break that filter. The In the manga, you like, mean. Uh, yeah, yeah, and, and in uh, the DM anime, but I feel I feel if so I feel this is more just an issue of there are way more men characters than there are women characters, rather than it being uh, sexist. Yeah, but but I, I feel I feel uh, I don't I don't I don't know if we wanna dilly daddle too long on that point. I just think that the female characters just they they don't have any any interests in their life and i feel like I, I get the argument that this is a show for boys so it's written mostly about the male characters and the female characters are somewhat incidental but honestly wouldn't like wouldn't it make sense to teach small boys that female characters are or like the, that just female females are people with you're, their own lives with their own you're motivations talking... You're talking about an anime from the '90s about trading cards here, Bogan. You're not. You're not talking about like. <laughs> I know. I, I feel. I feel this is a very unfair uh, criticism, considering I, I get it. where this Look, is coming from. I I get it. I just I I felt like that is worth pointing out. Like, maybe you. Sh I'm, it's an unfair criticism say... because the show has been made and it was made in a time where like shows like Seinfeld are also super fucking sexist, where all the female characters are just there to be love interests, except for Elaine. But it's just I, f I just find it wild to sometimes I, I realize that how little depth the female characters in a lot of these shows have and how, how normal it was to write that way. And I think that's just it's fucked up. 
So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say I don't think that the show is flat out sexist, but I will at least agree. Like, yeah, it's not great, and sure, it could have been it could have been done better. But at the same time, what do you expect from a fucking Japanese '90s anime about card games? I just like, it's, look. I get it is what I it get is. having to accept this and not being shocked by this, but I feel like it's at least worth pointing out so that other people think about this more. I think it's a useless observation. <laughs> I think the only thing I think the only thing that matters is that uh, we talk about death tea. Hold on. <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, death, death tea would be the end, right? Yeah. There was well, one the movie. There was one thing. No, no, no. Wait. The end is uh, the role playing game. True. Which also kind of sucked. And I also no, I didn't I didn't no. understand why that happened after death tea, even though death tea was cre- clearly the thematic end yeah, of the show. Yeah, the death tea felt like a more climactic ending to the show rather than it, it, sh- it should have been switched around. No, 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 no. See, this is what happens when Yu-Gi-Oh noobs, <laughs> smooth brained little children such as yourself get to watch this stuff because you don't appreciate the larger fucking narrative that is at play here. Okay. Can we before we go into the <laughs> ending, can, can I talk about the one episode that I actually loved? Which one? Be- it's the one where the, the top model comes in. No, you can't talk about that one. Let's talk about the end. No, I'm joking. Damn. Because that episode, I felt like if that episode was the whole show, that is actually what the, the potential of the show sort of realized in, for me. Because do you guys remember what the game was that, that she played? Yeah, it's some uh, strange derivative of like chess mixed with fucking battleship yeah i guess but they did actually explain the rules and it was very clear like you have your your statues they have a strength from seven to one i think and you can only play each each statue once and then there's some kind of joker i think uh, that that can beat everything else and it's like it's a a very very uh, simple game that waste that monster yeah, it's a very simple game, but I understand the depth of it where you want to beat the enemy statues with uh, just as, as, you know, a minimal uh, strength distance. You don't want to waste your, your six statue to beat a level one statue. And um, you, it's also just, it's, it's sort of gambling because you can't see what the other one places down, but it, you... She was very good at anticipating how nervous the other player is, and that's why she was good at that game. Like she was very confident and and sort of had a strategy. Like I'm gonna beat this one. I'm gonna play a, st- a strong one first, and then he might think that I'm playing a strong one again. So, but then I'm playing another one, and like I understand the mind games behind that game. And not only did they explain the rules, but Yugi gets like throws her off her feet by destroying her confidence by by making one st- st- a strong move and then sort of playing it up mentally so she he, he breaks her on on a mental level and that's why she falls us in the strategy you know yeah and it's like okay he he beats the the confidence of this top model that always had everything and that's what make, made us so good at the game and that's why he then wins like it's it's a simple thing but Mm-hmm. It's like setup, rules explained, uh, strategy adjusted. That's how I win. And that's yeah, all that's, I want from this fucking show. It's sort of funny. That episode is kind of more representative of what the manga is than the actual episodes that are adapting the manga. Because again, it like like you said, they, they explain the rules in a very clear and concise manner so that you can play along. Yeah. And it's a simple game, but it has some strategy like yeah. i don't know uh rock paper scissors it was, it was, there's a lot of mind games involved yeah. in it yeah that's yukio at its best yukio um so i think next time i suggest something maybe we should talk about like kaiji or something because sure. yukio yo yukio is like a kid friendly version of kaiji in many many ways 
And well, th- th- I mean, that's, that's Yu-Gi-Oh at its best. Well, I mean, Kaiji is also. That's, a, that's for you to decide when it's your turn again. Yeah, sure. You can pick Kaiji. I'm picking something else. Oh. We're not do we done wanna, yet. So, uh, do we want to talk about Death T? Yeah, or sure. Should I should I explain why? Uh, can I, guys, no, before we, before we get in death tea, because I assume that's going to be the final stretch of the conversation. No, I want to talk uh, about the role playing game. I have a lot to say about that. <laughs> oh no! Sure, sure. But I just wanted to say one thing. Um, I think Yami Yugi is the best thing in this show. Oh yeah. Um, and one of the things I really love is so it's it's pretty obvious that the person that does the voice for Yami Yugi is the same that does the voice for the regular Yugi. It's a woman who's pitching up and pitching down her voice, right? Mm. The thing I really love, though, is that the way that she does Yami Yugi's voice, the only way I can describe it is that it's a confident whisper. Yeah. It It sounds so cool. It's very insidious also, because... You don't like. You wouldn't know that this guy is the good guy. Because he's not the good guy. Some <laughs> <laughs> force of yeah. evil. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, but I, I just liked, really uh, loved the the vocal performance. Like every time Yami Yugi came on screen and I I heard him talk, I was just like, "Fuck yes!" He is a cool. Like, even if it was dude, something, yeah. even even if something stupid was was happening. Like, just the fact that it was Yami Yugi there, just automatically, like, the, the quality of the show jumped up, like, two notches. This design just is really cool. And it's kind of at the expense of normal Yugi looking really dumb. Like, oh, like yeah. a stupid fucking child from another show. But when he transforms, he's, like, he has a presence. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you and in that moment you also like damn you know what maybe <laughs> Taya's got a point. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just just wait until you get into like the Battle City manga where it gets like it gets borderline bondage porn, the manga it's insane <laughs> because it it's really it's inspired by like it's inspired by like Hellraiser and it's like a mix of Hellraiser and Dragon Ball Z and something else and like yeah. There's a lot of tight leather, a lot of chains, a lot of homoeroticism. Yep, this this is probably inspired by uh, Jojo. Like I said Hellraiser. Well, yeah, Jojo too. Jojo is a stated influence. I just kind of wish they had they went more into the law of of Yami Yugi. See, that's why that's why the tabletop game is the perfect ending because in the manga they do and. The tabletop game is the resolution of that f- sort of first arc of Yu-Gi-Oh, where it, like it it ends on. So let's talk a bit about the Millennium items and where this other Yugi comes from. Whereas I understand, I understand why Death T looks like the better conclusion for this show, because they like they don't care fuck all about where Yugi comes from. Like Shadi shows up here, and. There's no real reason for him to do so because no, and then he's, he's gone. Yeah, but, but like in the original, he's he actually sets up a dynamic which, you know, the show the uh, the story actually follows through on. Um, and I thought that they would deliver on it better when I saw in that top model episode that the Yugi's when he became confident, he explained to her, "Yeah, India has three thousand years of gaming history, yeah, yeah. but games originated in." in ancient Egypt 5,000 years ago. And it's like, oh, that's right, because he's an Egyptian gambling spirit. And, um, yeah, so, so yeah, that's and, why... And the, I know the the anime, or I guess also yeah. the manga, just goes into that. Like, he, they show flashbacks from his time as Pharaoh. So I was yeah, always the, the final, waiting for that. And they, yeah. the, 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 the arrival of Shadi just... It, it implied a way bigger backstory, but it, it never yeah, happened. He, the final arc of the manga is just they actually go back. So uh, uh, we'll talk about that after Death Tea because there's a lot to go into there. Um, Death Tea, the original Death Tea. <laughs> so the first the first challenge in Death Tea that Kaipa sets up is they're all playing laser tag, except the team they're playing against have actual guns, actual laser guns. <laughs> And they're also army veterans. <laughs> yep. 
Uh, no, they're they're mercenaries in the manga. Sh- sure, whatever. They yeah. they are battle hardened, unlike oh, yeah. these dumb high schoolers. <laughs> and it's like Kaiba, like what? This isn't a fucking game. This is murder. Dude, he 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 abducted an old man, and he's yep. making a public spectacle out yeah, of out know, of his execution. <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah, so you know what, what's really <coughs> fucking funny is I I ran on YouTube I randomly ran across a clip of Kaiba talking to Yugi on the flo- on the phone and he just yells you're a disgrace to the game Yugi <laughs> yeah that's when Yugi uh, loses thinking, to Raphael and thinking about all of the shit that he's done and it's like <laughs> and you're not <laughs> okay Daniel. That clip you're talking about is from Waking the Dragons, and that's an anime-only arc. Mm. Okay, so so Death Tea, um, I was only kind of half paying attention to the anime at this point. Do they establish that Kaipa is under the influence of a dark spirit? No, no. but they, there is a point where the, the old zombie the grandfather is like, Kaipa has changed. He only cares about the result. He doesn't care about the yeah. spirit of the game anymore. Like so they, they do imply that to some degree. That, that was the point. Sure. Of, that was the point of Mokuba as a character in the original manga, where Yugi beat Kaipa, and Mokuba then enters Yugi's life, and he 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 explains <clears throat> to Yugi that ever since you beat him, he's he's been a changed man, because Kaipa has sort of been taken over by this really evil, ugly spirit, and then when Yugi defeats him again, Kaipa just goes catatonic, until uh, until. In the Duelist Kingdom arc, where they, uh, where the fucking ghoul or whatever used Kaipa's deck, and when Blue Eyes was summoned, Kaipa w- awoke again, and then he's free of the spirit, but he's still a total dickhead. I see. So can we so also like, talk about it made green sense hair in the manga? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about the green hair. <laughs> and it magically goes away in the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was very happy so, they got rid of that dumb hair in the movie. So, where does the mo- is the movie in the manga? No, the movie is uh, the the movie is not manga. Okay. I don't know how this plays out in the timeline of the releases, but the movie just felt like sort of an introduction to the regular as anime to me. Yeah, yeah I I felt that too. Yeah, I uh, I agree. I think that's a way better representation. Uh, like the movie kind of felt like the blueprint which the DM anime followed. It did. Yeah, because it, it's very it's very a- different show. It's a very different uh, kind of storytelling. Also, just like you can also see in the budget, uh, there was a lot of beautiful shots in the movie where like Kaipa is hovering over monitors and there's like that cool '90s anime lighting in his eyes and like the uh the fire effects are really like that sort of translucent ethereal fire that anime doesn't have anymore there's a lot of that i think the movie is genuinely beautiful at points the movie felt like this weird middle point between what season zero was and what uh Yu-Gi-Oh! dm would become yeah in death it's tea. so bizarre but yeah it was it's kind of interesting but the the story of that of that movie for the most part where it's just focused on this lame kid who's just like I got the black eyes red, the red eyes black dragon I'm going to be the best yeah it was kind of annoying yeah yeah but yeah, at the same card. time I I think it was just it, it, again because you have, I you have to look at this from the perspective of it it's a kid show and I think it's just trying to get across this idea that like yeah look um just because you have like the best card or whatever, you know, you can't really consider yourself a duelist if you don't put yourself out there and actually, you know, play the game. Like you can't really just because you have uh, the best gear or the best whatever, like unless you put yourself out there, you can't truly consider yourself this best, thing. Yeah, I like um, in Death T in the manga. And I don't think they did this in the anime. There's a chapter where Kaipa hires like a cannibalistic serial killer <laughs> to murder Yugi and his friends, and they're all locked in like this this dungeon with him. And like the resolution of that arc is they trick him to break down the door with his axe, 
by promising like he could kill one of them or something like that. And it's like, Kaiva, what are you doing? <laughs> so, so the death T. Wait, the death T. That was in DM as well, right? No. No, I thought I remember something like that though. Uh, so. The resolution of Death Tea, that duel Kaipa has with Yuki, where Yuki summons Exodia, that's just the first episode of DM. Like, they... they it, DM deserves a lot of credit for how it condenses Season Zero into, like... It squeezes all the important parts out and parses it out over uh, the original uh, uh, arc of... Uh, the king, the Duelist Kingdom arc of Yukio. What, by, by cutting 80% of the episodes? Well, it... No, by... Uh, the the DM anime I'm saying is by uh they they yeah I they, mean cutting cutting out like eighty ninety percent of season zero yeah well it's it's more that they they wisely just took all the important stuff that is necessary for the world building for the story that's to come but they also just the placement of all the the where they placed all of it I think was very economic I think like the Exodia battle against Kaipa. That's really a, that's a very smart way to start the DM anime because then you can just immediately have Exodia be thrown into the ocean, and then like it it just it I feel like it's so economic with its storytelling in DM, uh, even though there's a lot of trash there too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So death T. Death T. It's uh, Kaiba is basically publicly murdering people and everyone is cheering on no one's calling the police even though this is all over the the, the television probably yes uh that's weird no <laughs> no that's just <laughs> what they're living in uh did we like the games of death Sea? because i didn't uh no not really like the the laser think... the laser tag game against the mercenaries and then Miho just panics and shoots everyone. Yeah. What a what like, a great resolution that was. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. It's that almost was, like the original so the original had a, an actual resolution which like wasn't the best but it was better than that. Like they they sure know how to get these characters into shitty situations. They sure don't know how to get them out of it. <laughs> I like the duel against Kaipa in the end where he where he brings out Exodia. I think that's the only part of Death T, like I said, like DM. That's the only part they brought back. That's the only part you really need. The the because every all the, all the other thing, it's just like weird, weird. It's yeah. just just nonsense. Like the the yeah. the blood puzzle was okay or puzzle, like the the machine with blood written on it. Yeah, uh, I think that made sense. And then they had these falling blocks, which could have crushed any of them. Like, yeah. Kaiba is literally trying to kill them. <laughs> and... I don't like how Kaiba is like, when y Yugi duels him, he's like, Ah, oh, Yugi, I knew you'd make it this far. It's like, <laughs> you! That's a... No, no, you didn't. No. And then the, the falling blocks where Taya guesses... She can guess the rhythm of the falling, and somehow that enables her to decipher where they will fall. Yeah, I which don't makes know how that no sense. And also, why don't you fucking look up? Like just look <laughs> up where they're coming and then step step aside. <laughs> why 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 rhythm? What is going on? Yeah. I, uh, also, here's another little trick. So a block can only fall once. Just climb on top of one. No, they they did stack. I mean, they oh, they they had to stack. Oh, that's right. That's how that's how Tristan was got stuck, right? Well, and also that's how they get out. Like they need to get to a higher floor. Oh, that's but, right. That's right. But but it makes no sense that these. Okay, well that is really nitpicky. But that these slabs of stone perfectly fall onto each other without ever falling off. Like it would be <laughs> chaos in that room. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> but somehow they make a perfect staircase. But okay. Yeah. I, I'm done getting hung up on these these dumb games. <laughs> except so the, the fight. Except the the fight. 
the fight is just like the the, the where Miho the oh. no the the fighting game thing where they're in the in the suits like oh yeah you used a special move so you lost hit points yeah <laughs> and and like Miho or the one needs to to pilot the the suit but then I don't really understand what the input of the person in the suit then is supposed to be. If the other person just pilots it, how do they pilot it? I don't know. Like, how do the hit points work? Why do they get them back by just believing hard enough? It's just... Uh. You can always you can always succeed when you believe hard enough, Boken. Yeah. And I know Yu-Gi-Oh! Even the, the Battle Monsters thing has a bunch of trust in the heart of the cards. And now yeah. I'm conveniently pu pulling out the one card that i need from the deck <laughs> yeah yeah that's uh those are the worst generally speaking yeah uh anything else on death tea no i want to talk about the role-playing game bogan okay all right let's let's, let's talk go. about the role-playing game the role-playing game is genius <laughs> it's such a mm -hmm. it's such yeah because it's like Okay, so I, I love the part, and again, I was only half paying attention. I love the part where Yuki... <laughs> but it's genius, I swear. It, well, if, if they did it in the anime, I missed it. Where Yuki, he's like manipulating the dice to get the numbers that he wants. And the way he does it is, so because you can flip the dice into, like when the dice is spinning... You, it can spin on some axes, and there's two axes where you get high numbers or low numbers. And he drops the dice so that the dice, like, rolls correctly, and he can manipulate when the dice stops rolling by r rubbing his leg against the table yeah, to yeah. vibrate the dice. It's like, that's, that, I love that. And, like, he and Pakora, they have to be like, okay, look, we're both clearly cheating here. <laughs> Let's agree that we have to drop the dice from this point on and we can't we can't manipulate them anymore, okay? But it's like it's, oh, he has been secretly secretly cheating to get uh, high critical rolls. Yeah. But the, the cheating process involves you hitting the fucking table to make the <laughs> to, to move the dice while they're spinning. How did they yeah. not, how did he not notice? Like how did he not <coughs> see it? Uh, it's such a. I don't know if that technique can work in real life. I don't know if there's probably not. Uh, probably not. But it sounds like oh like, maybe that it looked like a really heavy table. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you, no one is that skilled at throwing uh, dice. But like I, I love that so much. It's just uh, it's it's so it's so gimmicky. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. And I, I love the part. I love the part also where they cut off Zork's hand. And that means that Bakura, like the evil Bakura, he loses the control of that hand, and the good Bakura manipulates that hand to give the, the to give his friends a helping hand. It's yeah. like, oh yeah, because like and he comes actual... out of the wound. Yeah. Yeah, and then he he becomes a player somehow. <coughs> yeah, he's like, oh, I'm a white mage. <coughs> <coughs> Does that make Joey the tank? Uh, you know they printed that. Uh, <laughs> That white mage card, they printed that as Silent Magician, and it's like a girl, which is like... Well, Bakura okay. is basically a girl. No, Bakura, Bakura is a boy. If you say he's a girl, the gay community that overruns the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh fan art, uh, they will come after you, Daniel. He oh, is all I'm man, sorry. and he is very gay, according to them. Okay, he's a so very you watch gay yourself. Man. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. See, I don't even think he is that. I, okay, so here's the thing to all the gay people out there. I, I don't. I just don't think he is gay. I don't think the show ever insinuates that he is. There would the show would probably never insinuate. <laughs> no, like the that manga doesn't. I like they keep doing. But he's this. extremely gay coded. Right? Every single like, character let's... in this damn series is gay coded. <laughs> like, have you seen how Yuki dr Yuki dresses like a fucking gimp in Battle City? <laughs> He has like a choker on with a chain connected to his Millennium Puzzle and he's wearing leather pants and like a tank top. Oh, do you remember that little Karibo song where uh, he took uh, bad romance but yeah. changed it to leather pants? Uh, yeah, and it's that always like, it's always Bakura and Merrick, but it's like, 
They 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 hated each other. Who I don't the fuck think is they Merrick. Did... He's the ba- he's the that, villain of that's Battle the City. Spirit that isn't Merrick the spirit that's inside of Bakura. No, that's okay. Merrick is the bad guy in Battle City. The spirit in Bakura is called Bakura. They're both named Bakura. Daniel, I'll tell you something really cool. Because we're talking about the tabletop RPG. The final arc of Yu-Gi-Oh! is another tabletop RPG against Bakura, where the RPG is the events of Egypt all those thousands of years ago. Um, and you have one Bakura who's playing the RPG against Yami. You have another Bakura which is running around down there in Egypt doing all those crazy things. You have a third Bakura who duels Yugi in the in the role playing game itself. Um, yeah, yeah, there there are three Bakuras so, running around in that arc, and they're all just oh called God. Bakura. Why? <laughs> Why? It's really good. Uh, so. <laughs> I really, I really like that. It, it like the original confrontation against Bakura is just like this big Dungeons and Dragons role playing game, and then at the end, it's another Dungeons and Dragons role playing game. I think there's a lot of beauty in that. But then we get the movie, and then it's like back to card games, forever. Uh, the so the Dark Side of Dimensions movie is actually pretty good. It's pretty good, guys. Kaipa travels to the afterlife. To, like, he time travels to another ethereal plane of the afterlife because he wants to have another duel with Yugi. It's pretty good. So I just wanted to say, as an aside, watching this made me kind of nostalgic for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Bridge series. And I, I ended up re-watching the first handful of episodes. And, you know, I know these these were made, like, almost 15 years ago, but man those first few episodes really have not aged very well no I no offense like, to little karibo i feel like they uh mostly hold up what are you talking about i'm talking well i'm talking about the very first handful of episodes i rewatched um uh, they they're just you mean like the not, audio quality or like the presentation in general it's just not that funny the the audio quality is very bad it's also um, a lot of like Screw the rules, I have money. Like, oh yeah, that's a it's, funny joke in 2006. Before, yeah, like, that's, that's before the thing, memes right? and, and not, have existed. I'm, yeah, that's the thing, right? Because I remember this being, like, hilarious. But rewatching it now, I'm just like... Yeah, it just hasn't... It just doesn't hold up. Still. But at the same time, it's like... I'm talking about, like, a web series that, again, was made 15 years ago. And 15 years ago... There was nothing else that came even close. Like, this was, like, the peak of, like, YouTube content at the time. Nothing else could even touch this. Because it was that... Like, compared to everything else, it was that much better. And I think that's why, at the time, it was, like... <gasps> this was It was legendary. Yeah. Um, what about but, Dragon you know, looking Ball at Z now, abridged. it's very quaint. No, not Dragon Ball Z abridged. Why? Looking at now, it seems very quaint and very amateur... Because it was, it was amateur, and it did. It made me appreciate how much better he got over time. Because I, I have did like the, watch a little bit of like some of. The, I I haven't seen anything he's done recently, but I did fast forward a bit to some of the later episodes, and I was like, wow, he really improved his comedy. He really improved like he learned how to edit better. He learned yeah, he got better jokes, audio equipment. Jokes come about as characters interact with each other rather than just weird silly cat's phrases. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I found uh, I really liked the latest episode he did, <laughs> which he released at the beginning of the year or whenever. It's really like I think that's that's ooh, it's it's good it's good and he's at that like, right now he's on like the absolute the shittest the worst arc of Yu Gi Oh ever. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Yeah. No, I just wanted. To, I just felt like bringing it up real quick. Yeah. Because. Yeah, felt a bit nostalgic. I also, I like about him that he's one of those early sort of YouTube pioneers, but he's one of the rare ones who didn't turn out to be like a total sack of garbage. Yeah, he's, he still seems like a pretty likable and and, and nice guy. 
Yeah. Although there was one time on Twitter where I saw him hating on the Yakuza movie, and it is a pretty dumb movie. But I was I remember responding to him going like, "Ah, oh, yeah, it's a dumb movie, but you know, it's got some good elements." And he got like, he was he was really like, "No, this movie fucking sucks." There's nothing redeemable. He got like really defensive about how bad that movie was, and I was just like, "You yeah. know what, Lil Karibu? I'm just, I'm, I'm not gonna argue with you about it. It's whatever." I, that seemed like whatever. a that was kind of a weird interaction that I had with him. Hey guys, I have an idea. If I can get Lil Karibu on board, would you guys watch the rest of the Yu-Gi-Oh anime, cutting out all of the filler arcs and the non-manga stuff? If I can get him on board to record another episode of the podcast. What do you no. mean the rest of the anime? Like the, the original DM anime. It's like 224 episodes, but... No! No, no, no. But, but hold on, but hold on. I think at least a hundred of those are just filler trash. So it's like 124 <sighs> episodes. Daniel, you can do this. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll get him on board. I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm messaging him right now, guys. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Mm. And yeah, the movie, the movie is just whatever. Um, we, we basically, I've said everything I care about, care to say about that movie. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I have anything else to say about this show or movie or whatever. It's uh. Oh, it's uh, not as bad as Boken makes it out to be. It's not on the level of Handshakers. Look, nobody out you're there. Wrong. You haven't seen Handshakers. <laughs> I nobody, guess I haven't. Nobody out there should be in a hurry to rewatch this. Even no. if you're, even if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh fan, read the manga. This is, this is not. No, you don't need to watch this. I had a lot of fun with it because I like. I I have years and years and years of investment like in these characters and in this world and yeah the characterizations are all over the map and yeah it's like it's not the best story ever told but it's like ah I like I like this I like these characters I can just sit down and watch this and it's like you know 10 years ago I would have probably enjoyed that What do you mean you <laughs> like these characters you said they're all cardboard cutouts of good characters Yeah but I like the good characters so I also like the cardboard cutout ones. I see. Except for Kaipa. I think they really butchered that character. Ooh. Yeah, I, I'm just saying, I think this show is subpar. It's not like yeah, atrocious. It's just it's just a kind of dumb kid show. And that's about it. Like, I, I don't think it's that much worse than that. No. I like the opening theme. I skipped it every time. I think we... Oh, yeah. Really? I, I also like the opening theme, honestly. Kind of slaps. Thank you, Bogan. That was probably... That is probably my favorite part of the whole experience. <laughs> is that opening theme. I just wanted to get the show over with as quickly as possible. I'm, I'm not watch. I'm not sitting through this. <laughs> the opening theme is pretty good. What are your thoughts, Bogan? But overall? Yeah. I... You, like, you liked it... But you didn't love it. I get that. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are memeing on me because I'm so angry about it, but it's just... Can we not have a bit more uh, like higher standards for even kids' shows? After watching <laughs> Avatar, especially? I, I fucking knew it! I fucking knew you were going to bring up Avatar, you piece <laughs> of shit! I was waiting! I was waiting for you to bring it up! Whoa, You're so full calm of shit! Down. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> You're so full of shit! Avatar Why am is I like a shit? Avatar is like a huge exception to the rule. Almost no other show is like Avatar. Yeah, but you it can't should. just be like, oh, oh, it's just, after watching Avatar, shut the fuck up. Get out of here. <laughs> I fucking knew it. I don't know why you're getting oh. so aggressive suddenly. Like, <laughs> oh, we watched Look. a good show. I wish more good more shows were like this good show. Like, what? see, Bogan, I here's because... the thing, Bogan. I think. I don't know how many bad shows you need to make in order to make one Avatar The Last Airbender, but I don't think the number is zero. I think it requires a certain amount of trash to be produced for something good to also be produced. Be look, 
the thing is, like, you can't say, like, oh, you know, but compared to Avatar. But, like, <laughs> Avatar is not representative of, like, the average kids show. It is absolutely the exception to the rule. <laughs> Most kids shows are just kind of dumb and they're just, like, very surface level. And they're, they're just meant to be, like, flashy and for kids to just, like, consume on a Saturday morning before they, you know, whatever, hang out with their friends. Can, right? we not like, have, it, can we not have higher standards for this trading card advertisement? <laughs> yeah, we should. <laughs> well, we have, the, we, have the DM, we have the DM anime poking. Okay, I'm not saying that's bad. I haven't seen it in a long, long time. <laughs> It's it most like, it's I can't talk about this. But I'm just I'm just, I'm just like the reason my reaction is so over the top is because it just because I had imagined that this would happen and it fucking did and it blew my mind. It just <laughs> it really and I I fucking I hate lazy bad scripts. I just hate it. I I hate having to constantly go why is this happening? Why are they reacting that way? That made no sense. That made no sense. And I just think that even kids shows don't need to be like that. I think, I think, you you don't need to to write in this this garbage convenient way every single episode just because it's a kid show. It, it it's just it annoys the shit out of me. I don't know. Maybe that's a the hyperbolic reaction, but I. I get angry when I want to enjoy something, but all I can think about is you just took the easiest way out by writing this this scenario and like so solving it in a really stupid way every time. I think, especially, I think that was your problem. Especially uh, when think... when you could have set it up and solved it in an interesting way that reflects the personalities of these characters. Like they did that in the manga, which you're adapting. Cool. <laughs> yeah, sure. I think your problem was what you said before is that you wanted to enjoy it. I didn't want to enjoy this, so I, I, I knew that I wouldn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, as someone who, who really likes games and competitive games and who uh, who even likes simple <laughs> games, board games, all that shit. Even likes simple games, like Street Fighter V. Yeah. That's a See, this show was exactly what I expected, so... <laughs> I, I didn't know what I, I think, that's why I was like so like your 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 impotent rage against this show <laughs> is so ridiculous to me because it's like Pokey, what did you expect? I, I expected bad uh, slice of life bullshit. <coughs> um, which there was. Which there was. <laughs> I did not expect s- episode scripts on that level of laziness. Uh, that makes me angry. I hope somebody. I don't know if it's, a, I don't know if I, it's necessarily a matter of laziness or. <laughs> well, I don't know how to express it, but you, you know, you know what I mean, right? It's just because, like, every single episode, the resolution is stupid. Every single when I when I can find all these like sure. obvious plot holes in every single episode, I just get annoyed. Sure, I mean I, the show is completely ridiculous, but again. It's Wait, what show. the fuck were you expecting? Ridiculous, what? <laughs> Anyways, I'm, I'm I, a character I was now. expect I was expecting a bad show. I was not expecting an annoying show. Because <laughs> the problem is also that a lot of it is just very boring. Like the slice of life. Yeah. Shit. We 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 skipped, I will agree with we skipped that. Over it's all very this, boring. Like oh, we're working at a burger place now. Tristan has to to wait in a queue to get some dumb watch. All that shit that is the setup for the villains, all that shit is so boring until you get to the actual game part. That is the interesting part, and that is also often badly resolved. But like ten at least half at least least half of every episode is really boring. I do agree that like most of the slice of life stuff is just super boring and it's Well because because they watered down the characters so much that you don't really care about them. Sure. And also, they're not and, doing fun things. Yeah. And, you know, I guess I, I don't find myself hating this as much as you. Also because uh, I just like the idea of it more. But at the same time, I think the idea of it, even if done well, is extremely difficult to maintain. And I could understand why it moved on to the card game exclusively. Because having to come up with really interesting and unique games every fucking episode... 
like yeah. at some point yeah. That's hard. it's going to devolve into into nonsense even if, again even if done well and it's not mm-hmm. done well here i'm not saying it is but like even if like the show comes out with some real bangers at first after a while just do the structure of the show it even like the, the it's going to get bad because yeah. you, how how many times can you come up with like really cool interesting games and really cool interesting solutions to every game it's you're you're going to run out of steam if, yeah if there uh, was it's this, also if a fugi was also, really good at yeah. these simple games that everyone knows like tic tac toe like rock paper scissors and they managed to find like hidden depth that you never thought about in those really simple games like kaiji uh, maybe kaiji is that yeah i'm interested in kaiji kaiji literally begins kaiji with so a rock good. paper scissors tournament yeah, cool. This is true. This is true, and it's it's a it's a tournament that spans across like multiple, multiple, multiple episodes, and you would not think that it would be because <laughs> it's rock it's a, paper scissors. Yeah, it's also but, like, like it's so exciting. You're like, holy shit! Like, what is he gonna pick? What's he gonna pick? <laughs> rock paper or scissors? Yeah, because it's. Okay, wait. I don't want to spoil it because Ka- nah, we'll, yeah, I, we'll, Kaiji's we'll so talk, good. We will do Kaiji one day here. We have I really, to. We have to. I really hope. I really hope some poor smuck that listens to this podcast was tricked into watching season zero of Yu-Gi-Oh and was coming here for like, oh, they're gonna talk about the hidden depth that I missed, <laughs> and we were just <laughs> taking the piss out of it <laughs> the whole time and just saying, um, watch Kaiji instead, motherfucker. <laughs> Uh, but sp- uh, speaking of speaking of which, I think we're done talking about Yu-Gi-Oh! Season Zero. I don't think there's really anything else to add. So uh, yeah, but just before you say what the next mm-hmm. topic is, Daniel, I am not playing Final Fantasy XIV online. Just I'm putting that out there. You cannot pick that. I wasn't going He's to. Not going to pick that because that okay. is like a 150-hour thing. Just for the yeah. fucking story. Yeah, 150, 150. It drives me fucking That's nuts, t- man. I'm like, I I finished Heaven's Ward, I thought, and now I'm post Heaven's Ward, and it keeps going, and it's not bad, but it keeps going, and I need to get there till November. <laughs> fucking ah. <laughs> One day I'm what, going wait, to. Wait, no, the po- You're talking about the post patch quest, but oh like that. That stuff why is did super I, good. Why though. did I? Why did I bring? Why did I bring up Final Fantasy fourteen online? <laughs> Anyways, I'm going to say I'm very excited for Daniel's pick because I have absolutely no clue where this is going to go. I I, I can't even I can't even guess. It's not a video game. Okay. it's not an anime. All right. We're charting new territory here. We are going to read the Scott Pilgrim comic book. Of course. And watch the movie and watch the movie. Okay. You've been on a Scott Pilgrim. See, I'm not mad because th- those are both like critically acclaimed. So I'll probably like that. But. <laughs> oh. But what? Like, cause you're like, I'm not mad. No, I, I, I thought you were going to pick some garbage. You were going to be like, well, we're going to, for for the next episode, we're all going to start doing my homework so that I don't have to do it. <laughs> some stupid thing like that. But no, Anyways. you're you're, oh, okay. you're consistent in uh, choosing good things. Unlike yeah, I don't, I don't think I've picked a clunker yet. Please name one bad thing I've picked. Everything. Fucking Avatar. <laughs> okay, I uh, rest my case. But yeah, so uh, Scott Pilgrim is only six volumes, um, and then there's the movie, and that's it. So also, should not I, be too hard picked, to get through. You also picked Madoka Magica. Which is a great show. Uh, we can debate that. <clears throat> I, I yeah, feel like uh, we have debated that and you lost. I, I think there's a whole episode think, about that out there on YouTube. I allowed you to think that. <laughs> but secretly, but secretly, I never changed my mind. <laughs> uh, yeah, I Scott hope you guys Pilgrim. enjoy it. It's a, it's a, Scott Pilgrim's real good, in my opinion. And I'm I'm looking forward to going through it again. Cool. Um, I also will add though that um, uh, have either of you watched the movie? No. 
I know the first half of it or Scott something. Pilgrim. Okay, so I would recommend. Um, it doesn't really matter if you watch the movie first or read the comic first, simply because uh, the movie was made while the comic was still going. So mm -hmm. at some point, both of them deviate a lot. So just just to throw that out there, like if you want to start one or the other, it doesn't really matter. Okay. And uh, yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. Thank you all for listening. Uh, we will reconvene with Scott Pilgrim versus the world. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.